Give me your thoughts on the night, the main event. Uh, did it go down the way you were expecting? I'll tell you, I was uh, a little bit surprised at the volume that these guys were active. And, and then I was also surprised by when there's that many punches thrown, usually somebody's going to get knocked out. And those guys are tough guys, big guys, tough guys. And they fought a great fight. And um, congratulations to the champ. And I guess talk to me a little bit about uh, what's going on with your promotion and, and the Russian fighters, right? I mean, you, you guys showed it at the Fedor press conference. You have a lot of top tier fighters that have integrated here from Russia. You got uh, light heavyweight champion. You now have an interim heavyweight champion. Is that really an area of the world that you guys have really targeted uh, the talent pools recently and it's paying off? You know, I'll tell you, it was, um, it was something that when Fedor said to me, I have a team, I want to bring a team over. And then we started, you know, signing fighters, developing it from different CIS territory countries. And, uh, and then it just panned out that, you know, they just have a lot of amazing talent in that area. And, and I think you're seeing it here at Bellator. Co-main event, Liz Carmouche uh, with a very quick TKO, her first one since 2013. Do you think she'd, she's done enough to, to kind of sit in that number one contender spot, fight the winner of uh, Velasquez versus Kielholtz? Yeah, I mean, I feel like she's definitely earned it. I thought that was a spectacular knockout. And Watanabe is no joke. I mean, this girl, if she had a little bit of time and got Liz to the ground, it would have been a very interesting battle. But she did what she had to do. I thought it was spectacular. And, um, you know, to me, she should be in that spot. But I, I want to wait to see what the rankings uh, come in at, and then we'll decide what we're going to do from there. Hey, Scott, congratulations on another great uh, night. Madowski just won the interim title. You know, we talked about Brian Bader next. Obviously, Bader's held up in the tournament. Could be a really long time. Mm -hmm. Is, is Madowski going to sit on the sidelines, or are you going to book someone else? Yeah, we, we just talked about that for a second. We're going to meet tomorrow morning and talk about, you know, what the next steps are. But, um, you know, after, after breakfast tomorrow, I'll have an answer for you because, really, it depends if he wants to be active or what he wants to do. So, um, you know, we, we definitely have enough events to where we could – squeeze in another fight and you know depends on what happens with ryan bader you're right he could be out you know another six months uh maybe seven months i don't see it going past that but um he could be tied up into early next year uh you talked about today fedor you know you announced that he's gonna be fighting in russia it was a big story you didn't announce an opponent is is there a couple that come to your mind that you want to leak out that it's possibilities that you might be leaning that way has fedor requested anybody you know, I'll tell you, um, there is a long laundry list here. People have raised their hands to come fight Fedor in Russia. So, you know, I'm sure you guys know all the names that have been thrown out there. So uh, we're going to evaluate it. And then we're going to talk. I'm going to talk to Fedor tomorrow morning and, and see what he's thinking. And I know what he's going to say. He's going to say, you, you guys pick it out. But I think that we should uh, let him go home, think about it, talk to his coaches, because his coaches, you know, he, his coach is not here. Um, he's still in uh, in Holland, I think. So. It'll probably, it'll probably take us a week or two to figure this out. But, um, you know, after that, it's, it's you know, it's going to be game on. Uh, last question is actually a two-part question. Last weekend, Anderson Silva box looked really good. Mm. One, two-part question. One, what do you think of his performance? And two, I know you said in the past that you weren't interested in him. Does this change your mind? You know, I didn't see the fight, but I heard that he looked really good. And, and um, you know, Chavez Jr. is a professional boxer. Um, uh, but, uh, let me, let me just weigh judgment until I see it. But as far as, you know, him fighting, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, like he's already done it all. Right. So if he wants to do super fights, you know, in different areas, like he's doing now, I, I think that's great. You know, could it work for us in the future in a super fight? Maybe, but you know, that's, uh, that's, that has not been discussed. Believe me, there's no shortage of opponents in Russia right now. And, you know, Listen, the managers of all the guys, all the free agents are calling. You know, Josh Burnett was texting me today, you know, and I talked to uh, JDS's manager a couple of days ago, Alistair Overy. I mean, this, you know, list goes on and on and on. And yeah, I mean, we're, there's a lot of ghosts that might be a possibility in this in this uh, matchup. But, you know, listen, we're, we'll 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 figure it out in the, in the near future. But there is, a, like I said, a long list of people that have their hands raised to to come fight you know, to be the greatest heavyweight of all time. And yeah, why not? I mean, you know, if I was those guys, I'd be raising my hand too, you know? Hey, Scott, a great Bellator 261. Some had quick finishes, some had some great grappling. But, you know, coming into fight week, there were a lot of changes going on between the fighters and their opponents. How was it, you know, managing that and making sure that you had a successful card? 
You know, it, it just seems like that's an ongoing challenge every week. And sometimes it works out like this time we put the fight together, uh, you know, but sometimes it doesn't work out and we send a lot of people home. And um, I think we had, you know, two fights on the undercard that that uh, fell fell through over the last two weeks. Uh, one was uh, a, a pretest that they like a pretest. And that's just part of the protocol that we are, you know, bound to, which is, I think, the correct way to do it. And, um, you know, it, it's just it's just a week by week case. So, you know, to me, I think there's light at the end of the tunnel with the COVID situation here, at least here in the United States. Um, in California, one of the strict strict guidelines of uh, the strictest guidelines of any county is the county that I live in. And um, they, it's wide open now. Gyms are all open, the restaurants are open, movies are open, the malls, I mean, everything is like it was almost pre-COVID, except for some people wear masks, some people don't, but everything is open. So it's a great feeling. And, you know, going into Los Angeles, you know, to have a, 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 a full crowd and have an open arena like that, it's just gonna feel great. And I said, LA is gonna be a big night for us and it's gonna be the, the relaunch of, of Bellator since COVID started. Uh, one final question for me. Like you said, you know, you've been here at the Mohegan Sun since you restarted. Uh, what is it, how could you recap that, ju that journey so far? Wow. You know what? Honestly, the Mohegan Sun has been great to us, been great partners. And uh, it's been like a, a private soundstage for us. And we did, we did all those great fights. Uh, when I look back at some of the fights we put together here in this bubble, it's quite amazing. And, and I have to give my staff a lot of credit and give, you know, um, the, the Viacom protocol, uh, you know, piece of it was was the right way to do it. And 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 we stuck to our, our guns and, and uh, you know, we took about three months off when it initially hit. And then starting July of 2020, we started doing these fights and creating content, keep all the fighters busy, uh, making content for CBS Sports Network and now Showtime. Um, it's, you know, it's been a, it's been a blessing to keep this thing going. All right, we'll take a couple more questions here, Giancarlo. Hi, Scott. Great event tonight. Uh, you just touched on it earlier about the uncertainty of COVID, uh, the pandemic situation in other states. Uh, with the card you're having in Moscow, are you looking at maybe other countries, depending on what their situation is to hold events, or uh, are you going to be focusing on more of the United States market uh, towards the end of this year? Well, I mean, I'd say 80% of our fights are scheduled to be here in the U.S., and we will come back here just like we're coming back for the Gegard Mousasi fight against John Salter on uh, the 13th of August. Um, but as soon as we can, you know, start traveling to the territories that I felt that we have, you know, really, really grown a nice piece of business, we want to get back there. And uh, we have a lot of fighters in, in Europe that have been coming here, but we also want to go there and have them fight in their hometown. So, you know, to me, I'd like to continue the international growth of Bellator and Moscow is a big statement. I mean, to me, I honestly feel like that's something that I've wanted to do for the last 10 years since I've started working with Fedor, right, is to go to Moscow and throw a fight. And Fedor always invited me and I never, you know, we couldn't work out the timing. I haven't been there. Um, but to go there and bring Bellator there in their inaugural event and have Fedor leading us into Moscow is a, is a special treat. Michael? Scott, congratulations on a great event. Following up a little bit on what Giancarlo asked, uh, is Bella, to be more specific, targeting either Mexico, Puerto Rico, or anything, or, or any Latin American countries to host an event in the future or in the near future? You know, I don't think it's going to happen this year. I believe if COVID did not hit, we would already be in Latin America, especially Brazil, because that was definitely on the map. But, um, you know, right now we're focusing on 80% of our business here in the U.S. And we have Moscow and as Europe opens up, we'll go there. But um, next year, I think the sky's the limit. And um, we do have a lot of plans that we're laying out right now for uh, 22 and 23, 24 and even 25. So uh, a lot of good, good events in the, in the future and international expansion into uh, areas that we haven't gone that uh, the company has identify which countries are important to them and that's where we're going to go last one jay hey scott congratulations on the event tonight and just continuing on with that international theme with the uh move to showtime one of the things we saw is that canadian viewers no longer uh had access to bellator outside of the youtube channel just wondering if there's an update on the uh, broadcast situation up here 
Yeah, you know what? That was something that we're trying to work out so uh, the fans can tune back in. But I believe, like you said, it is available on YouTube, right, in Canada? Definitely is. Yeah, so uh, we wanted to make sure that the Canadian fans still had access to it. But as far as um, the, you know, the linear television broadcast opportunity, uh, we're talking to a few broadcasters right now, and, you know, that might take some time, but uh, hopefully we'll have it pieced together pretty soon. All right. Thanks for the time, Scott. Appreciate it. Thank you. Recording stopped.